our second lesson on sequences. Now I am going to apologise, the first lesson I used these, because um, they weren't very good for human consumption, and I'm pretty sure they're only for animal consumption, but then I found they're also no good for being on camera either, because they're so small. So I do apologise for that, we will be putting all these in the garden tonight, so the animals can feast on them. But today we're going to look at the nth term. Now the nth term simply means a way to represent our sequence. For instance, if we've got the two times tables, that's what we call them. We call them the two times tables. And the two times table is just a sequence, isn't it? Two, four, six, eight, ten. And it goes up by two each time. And instead of, instead of listing out all the numbers every time we want to talk about the two times table, we simply call it the two times table. But today, instead of saying times tables, we're going to simply use the letter n. So if we wanted to talk about the two times table, I'm going to call it 2n today, where n stands for the two times table. Or, in future, the best way to remember it is the term we're looking for, and that's going to come in a big help in our fourth lesson on sequences. But today, the best way to think about it is if we're replacing the word times tables with n. However, that's not exactly right, because in the future, when we start using the nth term, it's going to be actually standing for the term but this process would end being the times tables for today. I want to start by looking at this sequence. Okay? We have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And we're asked to find the nth term. So we want a way of representing this sequence without having to always say the numbers. How can we go about doing that? Well, the first thing we do with any sequence question is we find out what the difference is. How do we get from 1 to 3? Well, we add 2. How do we get from 3 to 5? We add 2. So on and so forth. We add 2 each time. Now, what times tables also go up by 2s? Well, it's the 2 times table, isn't it? The 2 times table always goes up by 2. So I'm going to put 2n down there, because I know this has got something to do with the 2 times table, because it's following the same pattern. It's going up by 2 each time. But I don't quite know what yet. So I'm going to then write the 2 times table above my sequence. And I'm going to look, what do I need to do to my 2 times tables to get to my sequence? Well, to get from 2 to 1, I take away 1. To get from 4 to 3, I take away 1. To get from 6 to 5, I take away 1. And actually, in all the cases, I'm taking away 1 to get from my 2 times table to my sequence. So what does that mean? Well, that means this sequence here... 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, is the 2 times table take away 1. And that's how we represent it. Because remember we said instead of using the word times table, we're going to use n. So it's 2n take away 1. The 2 times table minus 1. Because now if we think about what does that actually mean, if we wanted to know the 20th term, well, what's the 20th number in the 2 times table? 40. But in the sequence, it'd be 40 minus 1. So that'd be 39. So we look to see what times table this pattern is following, and then we work out how do we get from that times tables to our sequence. For instance, if you look at, let's look at this next one. Start off with 7, then 11, 15, 19, 23. First thing we do, find the difference. What's the difference between each of them? 4. We add 4 on each time, don't we? So I'm going to put 4n down there, because I know it's something to do with our 4 times tables. And now I'm going to write the 4 times table above my sequence. What do I need to do to 4 to get to 7? I add 3. What do I do to 8 to get to 11? I add 3. Well, actually, it's the same again, isn't it? So this sequence here is my 4 times tables plus 3 more. Again, if we look, the first term, what's the first number in the 4 times table? 4. However, in our sequence, we want the 4 times table plus 3 more. So what's 4 plus 3? 7. We get 7. So that is all the nth term is, ladies and gents, where we simply find what times tables is it similar to, and then what do we do to that times tables to get to our sequence? Let's have a look at a slightly different one, though. 25, 20, 15, 10, and 5. First things first, find the difference. How do we get from 25 to 20? We minus how do we get from 20 to 15? We minus 5. So this isn't the 5 times tables, it's the minus 5 times tables. 
This is similar to the minus 5 times tables, because the minus 5 times tables is minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20. But they go down in 5 each time, just like these are. So let's write the minus 5 times table. Minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, minus 25. And we do the same thing. So how do we get from minus 5 to 25? Well, to get from minus 5 to 25, we have to add on 30. Same again. We add on 30. Add on 30. Add on 30. So this is our minus 5 times table. Add 30. Let's look at just two more. 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. First things first, find the difference. To get from 1 to 0, we minus 1. To get from 0 to, one, uh, zero to minus 1, we minus 1. Minus 1 to minus 2, we minus 1. So this is our minus 1 times table. So I'm going to write minus 1n. Now, in algebra, I have mentioned this before in our previous algebra videos, we don't tend to write number 1. It's not needed, because 1 times anything is just itself. And it's the same for sequences. We don't need to write minus 1, n. We can simply have just minus n. So we get rid of that 1, and we have minus n. It means the same thing as 1n, but in this case, it's minus 1n. So let's write the minus 1 table times tables above. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. What do we need to do to minus 1 to get to 1? Well, we add 2. What do we do to minus 2 to get to 0? We add 2. So this is the minus 1 times tables plus 2 more. So it's minus n plus 2. Now you may also see it written as 2 minus n to make the, uh, to make the nth term look a little bit more neat and tidy so we haven't got uh, negatives hanging over the other side. That's a perfectly acceptable way to write it as well. However you feel best, you will not get down mark for putting the negative n first and you will not get down mark for putting the negative n second. It's up to you how you wish to write it out. But it's good to see it written out both ways because it could appear both ways, especially when we move on to lesson four. And one final one then. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30. Find the nth term. Well, first things first, find the difference. It's six, isn't it? So it's the same to do the six times table. And actually, if we write the six times table out, it's exactly the same. So how do we write it as an nth term? It's 6n. Don't overcomplicate it. If you've just simply got the multiplication or the times tables, you write that down. However, if it was instead 0, 6, 12, 18, our first term is no longer 6, which is the first number of the 6 times table. It's now 0. So if we find the common difference now, we get 6, 12, 18, uh, 0, 6, 12, 18, we're still adding on 6 each time. However, if we write the 6 times table above, it's the 6 times table minus 6, isn't it? Okay, so be careful there. You may spot the times tables and think, ah, it's definitely the 6 times tables, but the first term has to be the first multiple of that. So that's it, ladies and gents. To find the nth term of any linear sequence, we simply find the common difference. That tells us what times tables it's related to. Then we write those times tables above, and we simply work out what do we need to do to our times tables to get to our sequence. Do we add or take away? And if we do, that's what goes on the end. So for instance, 6n plus 6, 2n plus 3, 5n minus 4. I do hope you've enjoyed this lesson and you learned. If you have, do hit that like button. Also hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in our next lesson when we move on to quadratic nth terms. That's where it's no longer linear, and we have to start finding that second line of difference. But until then, enjoy the worksheet I've attached, stay safe, and enjoy!